Hi, beautiful souls. I'm thrilled to share something really unique with you today. I've had the joy to team up with Gaia to share yet another powerful episode from the initiation series with Matthias De Stefano, who I have had the privilege to interview on this very channel. Now, Matthias has this rare ability to remember his existence before this incarnation. And the information he recalls gives him a powerful understanding of the creation of the universe. In the beginning of our reality, the Elohim formed life in the higher dimensions, which would influence the creation of Atlantis as the mother civilization on Earth. As we explore this creation process, we gain a deeper understanding of what Atlantis holds for our current civilization, the importance of diversity in our world and throughout the galaxy, and the three stages of self-awareness. Now, when you have finished watching this episode, if you want more, then make sure that you check out the rest of the series by going to my video description and click the link there. Please enjoy. The story and mythology of Atlantis has been deeply planted in our subconscious mind because, in a way, it was the beginning of our current civilization. People want to know how it started and why. When I was born in the colony of Atlantis, I remember everything we could possibly know about Atlantis, about our mother civilization, through the stories of my grandfather in that life. The Atlantean people they were the sons of the first mixed between those people coming from the stars and those people from Earth. The Aesir, who most know as the Anunnaki, were giants that settled in the Middle East. They had sons and daughters with humans to make a civilization to help the Anunnaki transcend on this planet because their planet was dying. That created us, the Sem, the people from Atlantis. Some of the Anunnaki treated humans like sons and daughters, but there were some that treated humans like slaves to harvest minerals for their own dying planet. The Greek god Poseidon, whom I knew as Thalen, was an Anunnaki father who protected and guided 12 of the same children from their isolated civilization in the Middle East and moved them through the Mediterranean to the Atlantic Ocean, far away from the dominating Anunnaki to protect them. This created the 12 families of Atlantis. The planet has 12 doors that open the information from every constellation. So that's why they choose 12 kids, girls and boys, to put all this information in their water, in their blood. The first stage of this culture was to divide the main island in 12 small regions that were controlled by these 12 families. They understood that they were not the rulers of the civilization. They were not the ones had in, having to, to control the population. They were the ones keeping the information from the stars. They were not able to rule. They were able to guide. Atlantean people recognized that the inner power was to look farther and not only the horizons of the planet, but also the horizons of stars. The beginning of Atlantis and the origin of humanity is a complicated but important story. When we listen about the Anunnaki and, and the Aesir, what we have in mind is that they came here to create the human experiment and that they were our fathers and mothers and that they were the first ones on creating us. But the truth is 
not even them knew that they were part of the experiment. This season, we will dive deeper into the experiment by exploring the creation of races in the universe, discover how our ancestors from the stars influenced the creation of Atlantis, and uncover how the Atlantean Empire provided a blueprint for human awakening. Who was responsible for the creation of races? I am your host and guide, Matias Estefano. In this episode, we will explore how the introduction of races created powerful evolutionary steps for humanity. When the whole universe was projected in different dimensions and started to create different perspectives of itself, the most important dimension that we had to create more perspectives to see who we really are was the sixth dimension. The sixth dimension would be six spheres that represents the pattern of life in the universe. That's why the flower of life is six and the water, when it throws, it gets shape of the six. So it's the main structure of creation of every living being in the universe. And then by polarity to be, to have a being living in between time and space, the six patterns of time has to split in six parts of space. So th then you have the 12 phases or the 12 beings, Elohim, that creates every being in the whole universe. That's why the sixth dimension is the dimension of architects. These architects were divided in different, different trinities and different beings that we call the seeds of life or the seeds of the universe. And these big creations, these big spheres, are the first beings that are holding the creation and the project of bringing life to the third dimension, to the fourth dimension, and the fifth dimension. These beings are called the Elohim. Normally people used to call them like that, like if they were human-shaped beings or angels, but the first ones really were big bodies in the universe with a spheric shape that start to divide itself like different cells, like a, like a neck in the womb of a mother. So it starts to split in different thousands and thousands of cells. So each one of us comes from one Elohim. The Elohim were divided in different frequencies, different vibrations. So each one of them also were called like different race in the universe. So this different race of light, this different race of colors that were filling the, the universe start to create what we call the idea of archangels. Archangels is the way that we used to call the Elohim in other, in other vibration. So to understand who they are, to understand these first beings, we need to understand that they are the biggest body in the universe that you could possibly imagine and that you are a cell inside of this body. We all know of these ideas, like for example in Greece, the idea of Kronos. Kronos was the god of time and he had all his kids through dividing the parts of his body. So all his sons and, and daughters came from every one of the parts of of him. So that's how we can understand how the ancients understood the reality being born through time. That's the main idea of how the Elohim were creating through their own body the different races, species, and different realities of the third dimension. This Elohim were the will of the universe to know itself to look for tools for, for different ways to understand itself. So they understood that the creation of life would be a way in which through evolution, they could experience different processes, different 
aspects of themselves. So they start to take the shapes of the geometry instead of the vibration. They stop being waves through time and they began to have the shapes of the living beings in the reality of space of the universe. The first species from being created by them, they were not what we think about it is a species. We are the final product of it. We are the result of evolution through billions and billions of years of processing in the matter, in the creation of the third dimension. The first species that were created were the beings that controls the four more important bodies in the universe. And the universe has five bodies, but four of them are the most important. First of them is water. The other one is earth or minerals. The other one is fire. And the last one is air, gas. So these four elements were the first beings created in the universe. In some planets, we would find life created through gas, life based on fire, life based on minerals, and life made of water. We are from the minerals and water. There were thousands of first species created through those four of them, but for us, bacteria is the most important. And from that experiences of water, they created the structures of all the rest of the species. The fifth body is the one that connects everything, and we call it the ethereal body, and is the, the mind and the memory of everything that is bounded to the soul, which is the energy that goes through every one of those four species and all the ones that comes after them. From the ethereal world, the first species that were created and had a, a shape to be alive and to hold consciousness by itself, like divided from the consciousness of the universe, were the ones on the fire and the gas. They were more ethereal, so they were more aligned to what we could recognize as individuals. So they were living beings from the suns and living beings from from gas planets like Jupiter, Saturn. And those, those beings are totally different from, from us and it's impossible to talk to them unless we are elementals. But these this first structures, these first living species were, were created at the same time that suns were created, at the same time that galaxies were created. Then when the minerals and water beings start to evolve, what they did was to bring these ethereal shapes into water, creating the first living beings like Pleiadians and other beings that are so enlightened itself in, in other dimensions that they, they could hold the spirit of fire and also living in the water. That is related to the creation of water in the, in the universe but the most related to us, the, being, the water beings more related to us, like Pleiadians, Lyrians, and other beings in the galaxy, they started to begin when the water came to this planet around 4.6 billion years ago, when the moon crashes with Earth. There was other planets and a lot of comets and asteroids going all around. And the gravity of the moon was bringing with it big rocks of hydrogen that with the collapse of Earth and creating the big crater of the Pacific Ocean, it brought all the components to create the water here on this planet. So that what helped this planet to be alive and to have the water as other planets couldn't hold it because of the different temperatures or the different range to the sun. This process was not held by the Confederation. This process was held by the Sixth Dimension. The way they 
try to create new realities is through the destruction of the ancient one. So all the chaos of the universe was the key to bring the seed of life in this planet. When the patterns of the sixth dimension were created, they had to be put into space, which is the third dimension. But the only way you can attach to the third dimension is through time, which is the fourth dimension. So all the beings alive for the first time with the consciousness of the self had to go through the fourth dimension. They were building this, the first living beings, the first species into the fourth dimension so they could find the process, they could live the process. In the fourth dimension, they had these four stages in the universe, which was expression, experimentation, integration, and transcendence. The main problem that they had creating these, these species in the fourth dimension was that to just live one process, they could probably need like thousands and billions of years. So that's why it's so difficult for, for me and for everyone to explain when it specifically happened that civilizations and species that were first created into the fourth dimension went to the third one. So these main civilizations, they had this problem in which they were eternal. So they lived forever in the same shape. So that had the problem that we lived thousands and billions of years with the same personality and the same knowledge of who we are. So if we are trying to figure out many ways of understanding the knowledge of the universe, we needed to stop that. And we needed more life and more evolution. So that's why the species in the fourth dimension were forced to die. Death was the main creation to, to end with this eternal system of process of life. So the transcendence of a process of learning became death and the integration became to be old. And the process of experimentation became to be the reproduction and the expression was to be born. So that's why all the beings in the fourth dimension were for the first time creating beings in the third dimension through dying. And that's why dying is so important for us in the third dimension, because it allows the beings in all the dimensions to express the different ways of life and the different ways in which we can learn from ourselves. The only way you can evolve is by adapting to the environment. And the beings from the earth species and the water species, they found out that if they changed their shapes, they could be more, more eternal than if they are always the same. So they figure out that if they change their shapes, being the same within, they could, they could upload more information and download more information from the whole universe. So that's why the process of death, the process of, of dying, the, of ending something, it was so important because it helps to finish a perspective and begin another one. For all the beings that we evolved from the species of water, we are the living proof that we always are where and will be water, but we are only changing the shapes. Water has the whole information to create life, to express the realities in different ways. But those ways need to be experienced. So earth, minerals, has to shape it. So along the whole history and evolution of the galaxy, minerals were conditioning water to shape it in different, in different ways. So it could be holding some information or recording some information from every part of the universe and every part of the planet. So that's why, that's why the beings living in other planets and other dimensions needed minerals to condition the structure 
of the water of every being, so their own information could transcend through time and space in life. That's why the universe created this spiral of DNA in which all the information was held into the cell, which is like a planet, and all this information was being alive through the minerals and the water that was brought through the blood. When we think about intelligent species, we usually start to think about that humans are not from Earth and that we were created by, by beings from outside, which is true. But to understand how it works, it's not beings from outer space that came to this planet and pick some species and just decided to create a new one. They spent thousands and millions of years of observation trying to understand how this planet works. Because you have to think about how your body has its own immunological system that anything from outside could be killed by your own body if it doesn't feel that it's own. So what they had to do is to see which cells of this body, with what we call Earth, were able to evolve and to hold information from outside. At the first stages of the test, life was only in water. They start to prove with this joint of information, of blood, of DNA, in the beings living in water. So after a while, they decided that the best being to hold all that information and to be wise about it was the whale. And they then tried to cross the earth beings with the water beings and most of them didn't accomplish the, the purpose of our fathers and mothers from the stars. Like some cats, like some reptilians, some beings that were tried to be created from mammals, from reptilians, from, from birds. And those were the first ideas to, to reach which one of the species were more prepared to hold all that information. Then in Africa, the hominids, they were the evolutionary path in which the earth was reaching consciousness. It was not just monkeys going around and suddenly a species from the heavens came and modified them to create Homo sapiens sapiens. They choose them, they choose us, because they saw that the planet was going into this evolutionary path in which uh, the planet was looking for being aware of who she is. So they saw that these species were one of the m more prepared to receive information because they were looking for information. So that's why they choose humans, because we were able genetically to download information from other levels to understand who we are. And that's why in Africa, when they saw that the hominids were getting ready to wander the world, to, to think about the world in a different way, they just took samples of them in South Africa, in Congo, in Egypt, in Arabia, in Middle East and India, and they took the path that humans were taking because of the climate change at that time. So they were they were reaching that information, but they were taking those mammals to prepare them in spaces that they would be able to protect them. And that's why the first humanity, the first humans as we know it, they usually were born in islands. They took like really far away so they could prepare original people from Australia. They started to create different prototypes of humans so they could decide which one of them was better to mix with other humans. Some of the species were doing the, the transformation through genetics. So they, they were doing experiments and tests with humans to, to put that information. And 
by test, I don't mean in, in laboratories or hospitals, I mean sex, because a lot of them came here to have daughters and sons with women in this planet. And also women came from other places to have kids with men here in this planet because they understood that biology is the best way to mix them in a laboratory. So what they did was trying to mix their genetics and other ones just put the information through minerals or to coats. During the process of looking for the best species to hold information in this planet, every code of uh, genetics of different races of, of this galaxy uh, weren't able to survive. Everything that was trying to, to survive in this planet, they were killed by this planet. And in between all of them, the ones that did it better because they were more similar to us were the Arturians. And that's why Homo sapiens sapiens were the chosen species in this planet because all the other ones couldn't make it. Arturians figure out that we were really similar to them. They were aware that we were ready to have the same proportions of body, of thoughts, the brain, everything was so aligned to what Arturians were trying to do on Earth that, that we were chosen like a kind of a good species to, to bring consciousness to the planet. But because they didn't want to, to make the same mistakes that they did in other planets, they couldn't create just one perspective of that, of that species. So that's why we needed races. We needed different types of humans to have or to adapt to different types of information. So that's why the races were so important and the diversity of humans around the world is so important so we can have more data, we can have more information from every part of the galaxy. That's why we needed this Homo sapiens sapiens being so different, but at the same time being the same species. Because it's the only one, it's the only way that we can have all this information in just one spot, in just one place. The structure of the universe has three stages in which has to be aware of themselves. It's the three steps that we have to take to, in order to understand who the universe is. The first stage is the mental, the second stage is the emotional, the third stage is the physical. These stages are, each one of them, dividing into other trinities. These trinities emerge from the first one, creating three other fractalizations of itself, and those divides in three again. So what we start to have is a multiplication of this structure of trinities that brings us to have nine processes to be aware in the mind level of consciousness, then nine in the emotional and nine in the physical, what we call the nine dimensions in every stages of the universe. This nine then has to become aware to create a new reality. That's what we call the 10th. And the 10th realized that he needs to split again to see himself and to create a new reality, which is 11. So 11, 11, 11 are the codes in which we could realize that is the path towards enlightenment and recognize the whole consciousness in the three stages of the universe. That's why when we see this number, 11, 11, 11, is the code that makes us know that we are ready to put all the patterns together and to work for the divine. This means that we have passed through the nine steps of initiation in mind, the nine steps of initiation in emotions, the nine steps of initiation in physical worlds. So we, we realize who we are, which is 10th, and then we start to create a new reality, which is 11. This, 
these three levels, when we realize about all of them, we discover the number 33. 33 is a sacred number for everyone, for history and geometry, because 33 are the spots of the whole structure of the consciousness of creation. When we put all the geometries, the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, icosahedron, and the dodecahedron all together, what we will find is that you will have 20 portals plus 12 other portals in the structure of the geometry. So that is 32, all looking into just one, which is in the middle, the 33rd. The 33 structures of the consciousness of, of the universe makes us know that we have 33 ways in which we could bring the information to our bodies, to our souls. That's why we have around 33 blood types in this planet for humans that had the codes along every culture, every race, every species of humans. We have these 33 codes so we could download information from the 33 nodes of the planet which are aligned emotionally in our mind through the 33 vertebrae from our spine. So in mind, in body and emotion, we are aligned and bounded by the code 33, which would be the realization of the understanding of the whole universe and the universal mind within ourselves. That's why the 33 is the code that we all have to reach at the moment when we recognize that we are God in blood. The most common blood types for humans are O, A, AB, and RH. We all have that, but indeed we have many more. We have these different types that are bounded to our evolutionary experience. So these minerals attached to the blood has the information of 22 races in different planets, plus the ones that we had here in this planet Earth. So every human has these four different types of blood, but also we have a lot of humans with more, almost 33 of them that are divided in different regions of the planet. So we could here be like kind of a Noah's Ark of the information of every planet and the evolution of this own planet. So 33 is the code to enlighten humanity. And we all in our blood had for sure those 33 codes that are divided in different regions of the planet. So if we work all together, we reach the 33, which is the enlightenment of Earth. For all the beings in the galaxy, it was important to choose some spots in different solar systems to to keep the seeds of genetics, to keep the seeds of information. And humans are one of those that were chosen to, to be this garden of the galaxy where we could have all the data in just one tiny spot in this solar system. So it's important for us humans to have all this information because in the future, we are the ones that are going to be populate in the galaxy. We are the ones going outside this planet and go to Mars and Jupiter and to other places in other solar systems. And then we are going to reach Sirius and Pleiades and other places in the future that humans will be able to adapt because within we have that information of how it is to live in those planets. So it's important for us to practice how it is to be aligned with every one of those planets because by the moment when we reach the whole galaxy we will know the galaxy and we will know what to do with the galaxy thank you for joining me on this journey i am your host and guide matthias stefano in the next episode we will explore the pleiades and boot star system 
where the first experiments with species began. If you love this episode as much as I did, then make sure that you check out the rest of the series by clicking the link in my video description. May you shine the light that you are. <laughs>